Hello again and welcome to another After Action Battle Report with me, Mordian Glory. So today's After Action Report is focused on the Black Templar versus Blood Angels Battle Report that I put up yesterday. That was sort of to fill in for Black Templar Friday. Uh, I have, wasn't able to do lots and lots of uploads uh, during the week simply because the last rush before Christmas... Um, at work was obviously I had to had a lot of work commitments I had to get sorted out. But Christmas is now here, so Christmas break is now here. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Praise the Emperor! Ah, Christmas break. So lots and lots of recording uh, being able to do. So I recorded the battle report last weekend, and I'm doing the after action report now. Um, yeah, absolutely amazing game. A win with the Black Templars. Oh, it happens so rarely. Not that it, it doesn't, it's sort of like 50 50, half, unlike, you know, which is quite, you know, when coming from Guard, where you win most games in 8th edition, um, going, you know, going down sort of a 50 50 win ratio with the Black Templars is, makes it feel like I don't win with them very often. But I love playing with my Black Templars. They're such. A different army to my Imperial Guard. They're all about the close combat. In in with my guard, I fear close combat. I don't want close combat. With my Templars, I either love doing the charging, I don't even mind being charged. As long as I'm in there with my combat blade, smashing it into some uh, someone's face, that's all I care about. So absolutely, yeah, fantastic game. It was a really Really good to see the Blood Angels doing well in uh, in 8th edition. We've seen them do sort of okay uh, sort of on some of the other videos when I've been trying different things out with like the Scions and stuff. They've done okay then. You know, they've done alright, but they have, the Blood Angels had to fight normally really hard to even get anything close to a draw. In that game, they were they were close to winning it. Now, it might have looked like there were a lot of Black Templars left at the end, but the Blood Angels were close to winning it. I think if that turn two had gone well for them, instead of it being complete rubbish with four, with six attacks and two sergeants all missing, yeah, I think they, I think they would have done very well. Um, but the Black Templars won. Victory for Dawn, victory for Sigismund, and victory for the Emperor. So... What did we learn? That's the key to this whole tamale, isn't it? What did we learn? So, from the Black Templar side of things, what we learned was it's okay to go Black Templar Horde. We had a Black Tide there. That was a, that was an 1,000 point Black Tide. We could have made it even tidier. We could have even had even more people. But we took the Terminators. We could have had Terminators... Uh, 2,212 2, points. More, because they had the chain fists. 230, 240 points. That's enough. I could have got, you know, one... I could have got a 15, 20-man Crusader squad for that. I could have had 60 Marines. Um, rough, You know, roughly, I could have had 60 Marines for the same price as those... Um, you know, for, I could have had 60 Marines at 1,000 points is what I'm trying to say. Um... So yeah, it was. But I feel like the Terminators were really, really good. Uh, they won the game for me. Not just because that they killed Mephiston, that they holding them back. And you, I found this a lot in Eighth Edition. Is a lot of people like to spunk their resources straight quickly. They want to get in there, Alpha Strike, bam, 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 bam. No, what I've started to find is it's better to let your opponent commit his reserves. And when he has committed his reserves, that's when you can bring your forces in. Because what I found is that if you are able to just about hold the line, maybe losing slightly, but just about hold the line, if you're able to hold on using your forces and that are on the table already and not committing your reserves, if you're just about to hold on, what you're sort of doing is about 80 to 70% of your army is just about holding the line against 100% of his army. And then you bring that extra 30% in that you've got in reserve. You bring those extra forces in. And it just massively swings the game back in your favour. And that's what I've been doing with my Black Templars recently. Ever since that game when I, I just brought them in too early. And the Dodero just got rid of them. I've been thinking I just need to hold on. 
capacity to hold on. So it doesn't always work. With Scions, for example, you just want to drop in, smash, 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 smash. But you want to have an Alpha and a Bravo drop. And maybe even a, a gamma drop. I'm trying to remember what people told me the term was. Alpha, bravo, gamma, I think it is. But you want to have a primary, a secondary, and a tertiary drop with scions. Primary and secondary is normally enough. Tertiary is something I'm looking into. But with black templars, it's often depends how the game is going. But I rarely bring them in turn one. Rarely. I, I will generally hold with them until just the right moment. And then I commit my reserves, commit my Vanguard Vets, commit my Terminators. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it works. Other times it goes horribly wrong. But I'm starting to get it right more often now, which is good. So that's one thing. Committing reserves, when to commit them, is very important. It's not always straight away. With certain armies, like Scions, it's commit, commit, commit. With other armies, like my Templars, and, my, and depending on you know my configuration of my guard forces, it's very important when you commit your reserves. Games are won and lost on how and when reserves are committed, and that is true. You know, bringing this onto a guard focus, that is something I've learnt from my Steel Legion. Steel Legion, I used to just. Get my guys out of the transports, turn one. Get them out, extra Lascan shots, bam, bam, bam. I've learnt now that is not the right way to do things with my Steel Legion. It's perfectly valid to stay in my transports for the first three turns of the game. Normally I stay in for the first two and get out turn three. Per I, can, I can hold off until turn four if I need to. I don't need to get out of my transports. Because... And that's why I stopped taking heavy weapons in my Steel Legion squads, and because it was just like a hundred points that I was just wasn't using. But seven points for a plasma gun, that's fine. I'm having to take those troop choices anyway to fulfil my brigade. Seven, an additional uh, seven points, eight points per squad isn't a big, big deal. But seven or eight points plus then heavy bolters and missile launchers, that starts getting expensive. So, yeah, committing reserves is really important when you do it. Another thing that we learn is chain fists. Now, for the longest time, and on the internet as well, for long time, edition, people have said chain fists aren't worth it. I'm telling you guys now, I ain't leaving home without them. I am not leaving home without my chain fists. They were absolutely vital. The difference between AP3 and AP-4 is absolutely insane. Flat two damage is amazing. Absolutely amazing. There's a reason why Thunder Hammers are so popular because they do a flat three damage. N apply the same logic to a chain fist, except you get a plus one AP as well. I know it's only two damage, but it's worth it. Oh boy, is it worth it. I am probably going to take that configuration on my turn meets going forward. Two sergeant with his little power sword. Two guys with chain fists, two guys with power fists. Because two guys with power fists are sacrificial. But chain fists, oh boy, oh boy. It made it made the difference. It won me the game. The chain fists won me the game. Hands down. So, that's sort of what we've learned for the Black Templars. You know, Black Tide is good. Having lots and lots of numbers to overwhelm your opponent, it works. Um, it's... For a while there, I was distracted away from the Black Tide. I was taking things like Razorbacks, Predators. It's because I got the I got the loot drop. If you guys remember a month or so ago, I got the loot drop where I found all the Warhammer in the charge shop and I bought it all for 50% for off. Um, so I was trying those units out. It was nice to go back to the Black Tide. It was nice. I'm starting to get the itch for the 100 Marines on the table 100 marines i've got 60 40 are painted i've got 20 more two more 10 man crusader squads which are built but need painting they're base coated and they've got the shoulder pads the white on the shoulder pads um i've got a double plasma power sword squad and a double power fist double uh melter gun squad if i want to get up to my four my 100 marines i need to get 40 more I'm thinking of making them 
shooting marines. I'm thinking of taking 40 marines and giving them bolters and uh, combi plasma or you know or combi weapon you know plasma weapon and uh, a heavy weapon so I'm thinking something like 10 man squads 5 neophytes 5 crusaders sergeant with like a combi plaz or a combi melter or combi grav even combi grav might be interesting it's a, sort of a nice balance between plasma and melter and then taking a plasma gun or a grav gun and then taking like a heavy bolter I think that would be pretty cool and that gives me Lots and lots. That gives me tactical flexibility because I've got six marines charging at the field in your face, choppy, choppy, choppy. And then I've got four marines which are able to more, you know, sit in objectives, provide fire support, do a bit of damage. Gives me tactical flexibility. I, at one point when I first started the Black Templar Army, I was like, I want 200 marines and I want 100 of them choppy and 100 of them uh, shooty. I'm going to try a hybrid. I'm going to try that hybrid mix. That's the plan. Um, I haven't yet tried Grimdalus and I haven't yet tried uh, Hellbracht, but I know they're good, but I just can't fit them in my list at the moment. But anyway, so that's sort of what we've learned about the Black Templars. Black Tide's good. Um, don't be afraid to be in combat. Commit your reserves at important types. And um, Chain Fists are amazing. What did I notice about my opponent? What did I learn? from the new Blood Angels because we're going to have to face them as guard players as well they are good in combat they were out combating me a lot of the time um, I, it was my numbers my numerical superiority which swung the game for me um, let's just go through the obvious one the Blood Angels trait the plus one to wound when they charge or are charged is fantastic it combos so well with power swords. The wounding on threes with power swords just does so much damage. It's so, so good. Um, yeah, can't can't say that enough. Uh, second thing, Mephiston is an absolute beast. With quickening, my opponent was able to get D3 extra attacks. And both times you order six, so we got three extra attacks. That put Mephiston on seven attacks. Seven mother flipping attacks, hits on twos, wounds on twos because his sword is like two strength times two. He's AP minus three and he just D3 wounds a pop. With quickening, he's an absolute monster. However, without quickening, he's not that scary. Really not that scary. Um, when he had quickening, he was I couldn't stay in combat with him because it was suicide. When he didn't have quickening and he charged in against my blob and my chaplain, he only killed like a neophyte and did a wound to the chaplain. Just didn't wasn't the same volume of attacks. Like it just wasn't a problem. But with quickening, he you know took apart the majority of a Terminator squad took apart the majority of another squad and the Empress Champion. You know, with Quickening, he's an, he's an unstoppable juggernaut. Wings of Sanguinius is vital for him. It just allows him to boost all over the place, getting where he needed to be. You saw him. Mephiston was, was as manoeuvrable as an Eldar. You know, he was insane. So, yeah. Wings of Sanguinius plus Quickening plus Mephiston equals insane deadly combo. Insane. Um... Blood Boil, be very aware of. It has the potential to do so much damage now. Um, I can't remember the exact spell, exact exact sort of stats for it, but basically how it works is your opponent rolls two dice, and if he beats your toughness by three, or more, if he beats your toughness by more than three, he just does a flat three mortal wounds to the unit, and... If he doesn't, I think he just does D3. But it's just, it's insane. It's just insane. Like, it, it has the potential to do just guaranteed three mortal wounds. And it's not, you know, against guardsmen, against a squad of guardsmen, 2D6, and you've got to get seven or more. That's very doable. That's that's very easy for them to do, to get three wounds on a guardsman unit or three wounds on anything. It's tough. It's very, very tough. So, 
Something to be aware of. Blood Bowl is nasty. Mephiston is nasty. Death Company with Power... Death Company with Chainswords are insane. Four attacks each. Hit on threes, winning on threes. Or twos against Guardsmen. Death Company with Chainswords are your anti-horde units of Blood Angels now. You don't just need to go to the... Now Twin Assault Cannons have been increased in points cost. Honestly, Death Company with Chainswords, they will chew through anything. They're absolutely insane. Um, that's just four attacks. Assault Marine Squads. My brother, Johnny, my opponent, he wanted to... He wanted to go back to his traditional Blood Angel army. He wanted to try his his old style army, which was Assault Marines and Death Companies. And he was pleased with Death Company. He was disappointed with the Assault Marines. And we did have bad luck. But, it's a big but, I think he could, we, sort of, we, we were talking about it afterwards, those Assault Marines could work, but they need character support. He needs character support in the army. He has the Libby Dreadnought, which is great, and he has the Fiston, which is great. But both of those characters are damage dealing characters. They directly get in your face and they do mega serious damage to you. However, would he have been better with a couple of support characters? If those assault marines had gone in and they'd had a chaplain, a basic chaplain, no you know, no frills, no trills, no trimmings, just basic captain, all those misses on those sergeants would have been probably become hits could have re-rolled to hit likewise the death company could really have done with some re-rolls at times you know my opponent's dice weren't great they weren't terrible they balanced out like Mephiston was just hacking things apart my opponent you know but sometimes the units felt like they needed re-rolls um, it's something I've learned with my Black Templars and my opponent hasn't really had to learn it yet He's been relying with his Blood Angels on massed assault cannons. We're talking he goes to most games with five or six twin assault cannons because that's what he needed to bring. Death Company were useless and his assault marines were useless. I think he will learn that it would be best for him to drop the Libby Dreadnought and instead take a couple of chaplains or at least a captain and a chaplain. Or, you know, captain and lieutenant. Something like that. Give him the ability to get re-rolls very important can you imagine you know there's a guard there's a screen of guardsmen and you drop down some death company or you get your death company into combat one way or another they get into combat and you've got 20 death company with chainsaws that's 80 attacks that's a lot of attacks and it's easy to get 20 Death Company. And it's easy to get them into combat unmolested. You know, a couple of transports, a land raider, something. It's easy to do. It's not out of their own possibility. And you, you have a chaplain with them and a lieutenant with them. So they're hitting on threes, re-rolling. And then because they're wounding guardsmen, and because they charge, they're wounding on twos and they're re-rolling. That just cuts through huge swathes of guardsmen. You back that up with some twin assault cannons... Or some other firepower. And there's your anti-infantry solution. Everyone goes on about infantry being so powerful this edition. There's your solution. So what I'm trying to get across to you guys. Guard commanders, Black Templar commanders. Is Blood Angels have a full toolbox now. Don't let them get into combat. Because they'll rip apart your infantry quickly. And they'll tie up your tanks indefinitely. So. Hope you guys have found this video useful. We've gone over sort of things we've learned about Black Templars. We've gone over general concepts like reserves. And we've also gone into what to be aware of when facing the Blood Angels. They have the ability to put down huge volumes of attacks in combat and in shooting. And for a very reasonable price too. It's not impossible for a Blood Angels player to turn off the battlefield with three or four twin assault cannons. 20, you know, 15, 20, 25 death company and the rest on anti-tank and you know they'll 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 chew. They'll chew through a lot of armies like that. I think a lot of people get focused on the toys, but the Blood Angels have a lot of good but numerous elite infantry. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you find it useful and I'll see you guys next time.